And of course, this is where we've seen a huge paradigm shift. I talked about exoplanets two years ago. If I just showed you how the field has changed just in those two years, this is just the number of exoplanets discovered as an effect of time, right, just for the last two years. Here, exoplanet research is changing hugely. We now know of at least 19,000 planets in about 1,200 systems, and there are plenty more candidates out there to discover. And the most fundamental thing we're discovering is that our solar system is not like other solar systems. These are confirmed exoplanets, their sizes. The most common kind of exoplanet is one type that we don't have in our solar system. In our solar system, you've got the rocky planets, big jump gas giants. The most common type of exoplanet around other stars is one where it's either a super Earth or a mini Neptune, something that sits within this region about one to four times the size of the Earth. So they, you know, the divide between a rocky planet and a gas giant is far less well determined than it seems in our solar system. We don't know these mini Neptune super Earths. We don't really know whether they're rocky or whether they're gas giants. Maybe the mini Neptunes are ordinary Neptunes that have been bowled away because they're too close to their sun. There's lots of speculation, but again, it means that we're actually looking at what goes into a planet in greater detail and trying to work out the different char characteristics of planets and changing our views about what kind of planets are out there. Super-Earths, I mean, this is just an artist's impression of various super-Earths that have been detected in comparison to the size of Earth. Again, they may not be dissimilar to Earth. And we can detect these, but actually finding anything like Earth is beyond our current technology. You can only detect something that's relatively close into its stars so that you detect signals of the planet moving in front of the star on a regular basis, so on fairly short time, time scales. We are not yet susceptible to finding Earth-like planets um, that are su sufficiently far out to resemble our own Earth. We tend to look at dimmer, smaller, redder stars where they're much cooler, and you detect Earth-like planets that are about the same temperature as our Earth, that they happen to be closer into their stars, so you see the occurrences of them moving in front of the disk more often. But it's not just the kind of planets we're detecting. We can, of course, characterise their atmospheres. If you have a very massive star that moves in front of... It, so I'm talking a gas giant, a kind of hot Jupiter that moves in front of its sun, the sunlight gets filtered through its atmosphere during the transit here, and it imprints on it chemical signatures. So over the last few years, we've been able to determine what molecules are in the atmospheres of some of these gas giants. Developments are now that it's not just seeing this chemical imprint. If you don't see a chemical imprint, you can make inferences about the cloud layers within that atmosphere. We're beginning to see cloud, detect which of these gas giants have what kind of cloud layers, or these super Neptunes have cloud layers on them. We're beginning to tell some things, not just about the chemical composition of the atmosphere, but also the climate within these atmospheres. Um, here, for example, is WASP-43b. This is something about the size of Jupiter, but it's got double the mass. It goes round its sun every 19 hours. Observations now can reveal uh, the temperature profile across the atmosphere and within the atmosphere, meaning we can work out what the circulation is between the, of air and, um, uh, and heat from the day to the nighttime side of the, of the, the planet. We're beginning to find out more about conditions on planets, but we are still limited to only really looking at the really big planets. This is the smallest planet for which we have detected the molecules within the atmosphere. This is a, um, about the size of Neptune. We've detected water vapour, hydrogen, and other molecules in its atmosphere, which is fairly cloud-free. Perhaps, with James Webb Space Telescope, we can do similar science looking at the atmospheres of super-Earths. Even though we know there are Earth-like planets out there, finding stuff about their atmospheres is going to wait even longer than that. So again, you're looking long time frame to developments in exoplanet research. But again, fantastic potential. Without having to go there, we can probe these other planets. 